let me see the screen that means that I'm not calibrated yet I'm not ready and he's not ready so I got go back to my uh, monitor and I tell the, uh, the computer that what is my rock what is my uh, paper what's my scissors so I'm saying that this is my rock this is my uh, paper and this is my scissor so now it knows what is whatever it is okay so three is scissors you can see mm -hmm. and two is paper and one is rock okay so I'm I'm ready like my calibration works I go back to this screen screen I'm saying that I'm ready so it says you're ready and on a, on a screen, screen it says opponent, so opponent is ready, is ready. Mm -hmm. so I'm it waiting for my opponent to calibrate my moves over here so uh, I've just finished calibrating my moves and so I will set my flag high so it's started okay I did rock he did scissors I won mm -hmm. I did paper, he did drug, he won. Ah, yeah, I he won. won sorry. Again, sorry, yeah. That's my point? He got the point. I said opponent's point. I won the game. Okay, so. So. <laughs> so it's pretty reliable, and, and, and it's based upon. Uh, size so, or shape or what? So this is the thing. We were going to do edge detection, which is not that hard to do it too, but there are only three options. And so the easiest version of doing that, since we got our skin detection working pretty well without mm -hmm. noise, and it's like no matter what you put, it only sees the skin. And uh, as you can see, the area of the rock, paper, and scissors is so different. We just use the area. So what we do is we use the SD RAM to like, print out when we're on this screen. Like we're printing it out. And once we're uh, setting the uh, RGB values, we're also checking if RGB values are like 1024, which means that if they're all three, which it will be white, or zero, mm -hmm. which means black. So if it's 1024, all of them, if it's white, we have a dot signal. We set that uh, a variable to a dot signal. Then if we have a small, um, like always block, where we add up all the dot signals, okay. have a total, and we every, at the end of every cy uh, cycle, when the VGA hits uh, the, uh, the right uh, bottom corner, we uh, put that variable into another variable, and we, uh, we tell, we have a function, we have a module, uh, where we say that once you do calibration, it does the same thing. So you, it tells you your calibration move, uh, like that mm -hmm, uh, white sure. area. Yeah, right. And then we take that to that, that function, and that function tells that, oh, the least difference between your current move and the calibration is a rock or paper or mm -hmm. scissor. So that's how we use it and it's pretty reliable because the area is so different and we have a really good skin detection. Okay, that, yeah, the skin detection looks quite solid. So like since we have it, like we don't need to do the edge detection. So you're, you're getting a little bit of shadowing, shadowing. Yeah. but that doesn't seem to bother you as long as, as the ha you, hand position is fairly constant, right? right? As long as you calibrate it the way you're doing it. If you don't, uh, like if you're right. doing calibration, do like this, and then and rotate the game, your hand. do it like this, it won't work. Sure. So as long as like what you're gonna do, say like, hey, this is my paper. Don't uh -huh. change your paper. You can right. do this. You can move it around as long as you're in the screen and not getting closer. Mm -hmm. If you're on mm -hmm. the same y-axis, uh, x-axis, you can change the y-axis and it will still work. It's still a paper. It's still a rock. So you you have translation invariance, but not distance invariance. Would have been. Is there any way to do redistance invariance? That's, uh, that's with the edge detection. With edge detection, but not with not with uh, not with area. Just area. Again, you have to click. That's the like, whole point of calibration. Unless, unless you put something, a mark on your hand that was always the same size, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's say that you had a little, you had a square on your on on the on the corner of your hand right here. Then you could then you could. You could normalize it, right? Yeah, that, that's yeah. But, but based but on the size of the square. Based can, on the size of the square, then, you can like, get, it's not the real. Yeah, I know, but you, but you're, but you're, but you're, but this gives you just complete interaction in a natural fashion. And right. the hardware and NIOS is perfect to sync. Whenever we go back, it perfectly syncs. It actually takes us time because we cannot uh, drive the same clock 
uh, on two different PLL. We have we have a PLL on a SDRAM, and Naya says it's on uh, PLL. So we do, we use a, a VGA clock for both of them mm -hmm. and make them equal in the and SOPC builder. So do you have any synchronization problems between between PCs or between oh, boards? Right. So here's the thing. The worst case scenario of the synchronization between us is two microseconds. The reason is that when I'm saying I'm ready, I'm, wait, I'm still waiting for him to be ready. If I'm ready first and he sends me that I'm ready too, I automatically start rock, paper, scissors, right? But I have to still send him that I'm ready too, which, is, which takes uh, a, around one microsecond. So, so that, that is that. And also the second one is uh, on the NIOS uh, code, if you're on the, like, at the end of the case, so we have to have one more cycle, which is the worst case, so the synchronization problem will be only two microseconds. Okay, so that's negligible. So which is negligible. For the, for the and also playing the game, it actually, uh, we found that it worked quite well uh, as far as timing went. Uh, and we, you know, we tested this by, you know, kind of yelling out what we're seeing on the screen. Uh, unfortunately, because we're on two, two separate sides of the, of the bench here, it's a little hard to see both and synchronize it that way. So we kind of just uh, yelled them out, said, you know, it's rock now, it's paper now, it's scissors now. And now it's finished, and this is what I played, this is what you played, and we made sure that that timing matched really human levels. Uh, we weren't too worried about, you know, a few microseconds here and there, mainly sure. because for as far as human usability goes, really uh, getting the timing within half a second, I think, or, you know. Uh, sure. Yeah, and also shooting totally has a one game. second delay, so that my two microseconds will be gone. Sure, like, of course, right. Like, so, and after shoot, uh, so it's uh, the game is not only one time rock paper scissors. It's best out of five, or whoever reaches three wins. So it's after the, it doesn't rock paper scissors shoot. It waits three seconds, and the next game starts. Rock paper scissors shoot. Okay. And as long as it ties, it goes forever. Yeah. Okay. And it's a first to three game. Uh, it's designed to be a first to three. So whoever uh, whoever wins the game. Uh, whoever gets three points first, um, which is shown on both screens, wins the game and says game over, you lose. Um, after which the system uh, holds, at, uh, holds at its final state. Uh, we've, uh, we experimented with uh, throwing in some reset logic to start a game over, but we actually found that for our purposes we were really just testing to see that one game worked correctly. Um, however, adding that additional functionality would be trivial. Uh, right. We just don't have it right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you.